Hello guys, I'm sure you know that we lie many times a day. Small lies, big lies, white lies. But how do you feel when you catch yourself lying? Uncomfortable? Disappointed? No feeling at all? The point is that you see yourself as an honest person, not a liar, even if you just lied. So there's some tension that you want to resolve. To solve it, you will come up with arguments like, I won't do it again, nobody got hurt, and he deserved it. You will do anything not to recognize the honest truth about dishonesty, as Dan Ariely said in his famous book, that we are all liars. Why do we stick to our beliefs even when the evidence shows that we are wrong? Today, in Deciding How to Decide, we will talk about cognitive dissonance. And what exactly is it? Cognitive dissonance is the mental conflict that occurs when new information contradicts our beliefs or assumptions. We try to find a way to resolve this contradiction and to reduce the discomfort it provokes by rejecting, debunking, or avoiding new information or by persuading ourselves that no conflict really exists. You want to hear something funny? In the famous experiment by the social psychologist Leon Festinger, he infiltrated a Chicago-based cult called the Seekers, whose members left jobs, schools, and spouses, and gave away money and possessions to join the group. The Seekers believed that the world would be destroyed by a flood on December 21, 1954, and that they, the believers, would be saved by a flying saucer. Festinger was interested in knowing how the members would react when the prophecy failed. Well, surprise, the prophecy failed. The world didn't end that day. Did reality beat the seekers? Did they disband it afterwards? Not at all. They doubled down. When nothing happened on that winter day, most of the members became even more staunch and rigid defenders of their beliefs. They made several rationalizations for the non-event. They also called the newspapers, sought out interviews, and started actively proselytizing, enlisting social support for their beliefs. Let's go through another example. Pedro is a longtime environmentalist. He belongs to several green groups and is a regular in their events. He's even thinking of buying a Tesla. One day, Pedro discovers through readings and lectures that coffee processing plants negatively affect the environment. He is dismayed. He is a huge coffee drinker and a Starbucks regular. So he painfully discovers he is part of the problem he is trying to resolve. And he doesn't like it. He is sure he can't give up his morning coffee. To get rid of this inconsistency and to resolve his identity crisis, Pedro labels the lecture and readings as misinformation. In this way, his coffee and identity are saved. He stops for a mocha frappuccino at Starbucks with peace of mind. And why does cognitive dissonance happen? First, human beings strive for psychological consistency, which makes us form stable identities and to understand the world around us so we can function in it better. On the other hand, inconsistency makes us feel uncomfortable. Coping with the nuances of contradictory ideas is mentally stressful. Second, we tend to stick to our long-held and important beliefs. So, when faced with information that contradicts them, it's easier for us to dismiss it by challenging its veracity, even if we have evidence to accept it. And why it's important. Rejecting, rationalizing, or avoiding information that is in conflict with our beliefs can lead to poor decision making. We sometimes reject information not because it's false, but because it makes us feel uncomfortable. Imagine a scientist who invented a new drug and disregards any evidence that questions its efficacy rather than just trying to fix the drug itself. Decisions made in the absence of truth can have a harmful consequence on both ourselves and those around us. And what can we do about it? You can't really avoid cognitive dissonance since it's merely the discomfort we feel when our beliefs collide with new information, not the response itself. 
What you can manage is how we deal with this discomfort. We should resist our natural tendency to reject and avoid information that conflicts with our beliefs. Instead, we should open ourselves to fixing our beliefs and modifying our behavior when convincing evidence challenges them. Easier said than done. Now, a disclaimer. Remember, this video is not the last word regarding cognitive dissonance. Its goal is to ignite your interest in this topic so you can do your own research. Send us your feedback so we can continue this conversation. Time to go. See you next time. Thank you.